Welcome back, tech enthusiasts. Today, we're shining the spotlight on a unique HP mini PC that bucks the trend by featuring an AMD Ryzen instead of the usual Intel CPUs. This elite desk boasts improved integrated graphics, which brings a perfect blend of performance and versatility to the modern workplace with a notch for little gaming between the team meetings. In this video, we'll dive deeper into the specs and features of this mini PC and explore whether it's a worthwhile investment for a $100 secondhand purchase. The Elite Desk 705 is a sleek and compact mini PC. On the front, you'll find three USB ports and two headset jacks, with a notable highlight being the inclusion of a USB Type-C port. This was a rare feature when the PC debuted seven years ago, setting it apart from its competitors from Lenovo and Dell, which didn't offer this port in their models at the time. Moving to the back, you'll find four additional USB ports, an Ethernet port, a power port and two display ports. However, it's worth noting that an HDMI port is not a standard feature, although it is possible to configure the PC to include one. This is thanks to HP's Flex.io system, a modular technology that allows users to customize the I.O. configuration to suit their needs. While typically used in data center environments, HP Flex I.O. is also available on some elite desk models, including this one. The options include HDMI, Type-C, DisplayPort, VGA or a serial port and can be found on online marketplaces like eBay at relatively affordable prices. The PC market has long been dominated by Intel, with major players like HP, Lenovo and Dell having a long-standing relationship with the company. In the early 2010s, Intel's Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge processors held a significant performance lead over AMD's Bulldozer and Piledriver, solidifying Intel's position as the market leader. However, in the mid-2010s, AMD's Ryzen and Ryzen Threadripper regained the performance lead in many areas, particularly in multi-threaded workloads and gaming. Despite this, increasing market share is a slow and challenging process. Notably, the Elite Desk 705 G4 was one of the first mini PCs to feature a Ryzen CPU. The adoption of Ryzen CPUs hasn't changed HP's usual habit of offering a myriad of different hardware configurations. The Elite Desk 705 G4 can be customized with various combinations of CPUs, memory, storage and even ports. The PC was also available in several sizes, mini, small form factor and micro tower. The unit I have here is likely equipped with the most popular CPU configuration, a Ryzen 5 2400G. This quad-core desktop processor features integrated Radeon RX Vega graphics, making it suitable for general computing and light gaming without a dedicated graphics card. It operates at a base frequency of 3.6 GHz and can boost up to 3.9 GHz, supporting simultaneous multi-threading for improved performance. As part of the first-gen AMD Zen architecture, the Ryzen 5 2400G represents a significant milestone in AMD's history, marking a major revolution in their products and brand image. The HP Elite Desk 705 G4 was also available with older AMD A6 and A10 CPUs, but I would recommend opting for the Ryzen processor instead. Although it has a fairly high TDP at 65 watts, thanks to a relatively high base clock speed, I didn't encounter any noisy fans once during my tests. The CPU managed to score 948 points in Cinebench single core and 4155 in multi-core performance. The CPU has sufficient power to handle office tasks, including more demanding creative workloads. However, it's essential to keep in mind that it's a 7-year-old processor and its performance may not be on par with more modern CPUs. The Elite Desk 705 G4 utilizes the Pro version of the Ryzen 5 2400G. In terms of performance, the Pro and non-Pro versions are identical. However, the Pro variant offers additional business-focused features that set it apart. These include enhanced security features such as AMD Secure Processor and AMD Secure Boot, which provide an extra layer of protection against malware and other security threats. Additionally, the Pro version supports advanced management features, including AMD's manageability, which enables easier remote management and monitoring of systems, making it a valuable asset for IT departments. Both the Pro and non-Pro CPUs support virtualization, allowing users to run multiple operating systems or virtual machines on a single physical machine. 
This feature is particularly beneficial for developers, testers and anyone who requires multiple operating systems on a single computer. While the Pro version's additional management tools may enhance the virtualization experience in enterprise environments, I don't have extensive experience in this area, so I won't delve deeper into that topic. The main competitors at the time were 7th and 8th gen Intel i5 CPUs. The i5-8500 has two more CPU cores compared to the Ryzen 5, but the Ryzen has better integrated graphics with higher clock speeds, more execution units and frame rates that are often 20-50% higher. However, for a mini PC, graphics capabilities might not be a top priority. It's rare for users to utilize such a machine for gaming. That being said, if gaming is a consideration, the Ryzen 5 2400G can handle very light gaming on older games. Of course, dedicated graphics will still be superior for serious rendering and modeling work. The integrated graphics in the Ryzen 5 2400G are based on the Vega architecture and are known as the Radeon RX Vega 11. The GPU shares system RAM, so having more RAM available can provide more detailed textures and smoother performance in games. The PC currently has 8GB, but 16GB are recommended for gaming. To test the PC's gaming capabilities, I tried out two games. I downloaded the free Forza Horizon 4 demo and ran the built-in benchmark. The results showed that the PC was able to maintain above 30 FPS at 1080p resolution and low preset, despite the game warning me that the system's GPU and total memory were insufficient. In Counter-Strike 2 with low preset and 1080p, the results are similar, around 35 FPS. While it's playable, I wouldn't recommend it for serious gameplay. There are occasional small stutters in more dynamic scenes, which can be annoying. However, it's worth noting that Intel's integrated graphics, such as the Intel UHD Graphics 630, have a more efficient video encoding and decoding engine known as Intel Quick Sync Video. This engine is optimized for H.264 and H.265 video encoding and decoding, which are widely used in modern video formats. As a result, if you plan to use this PC or CPU for tasks like running a Plex server or similar applications, the integrated Radeon graphics might not be the best choice. The Elite Desk 705G4 features two DDR4 memory slots, supporting a maximum of 32GB with speeds up to 2666 mega transfers per second. In this particular unit, there are two sticks of RAM, totaling 8GB. In terms of storage, the Elite Desk offers a range of options, including traditional 2.5-inch SATA HDDs and PCIe NVMe drives. This PC is equipped with a 256GB NVMe drive from Kyoxia, a Japanese memory manufacturer that was spun off from the Toshiba conglomerate in June 2018. The drive's health is reported to be 94% good, with 21,000 power on hours, which translates to approximately 875 days or almost two and a half years of usage. Fortunately, upgrading the storage is a relatively straightforward process, unlike some other Mac Mini PCs on the market. Opening the Elite Desk 705 is easy, and the internal layout is very simple. The system fan has levers that hide the RAM slots. Next to the RAM slots is the CPU. There's also an optional drive bay here that can accommodate a 2.5 inch drive. However, this drive bay is not available on every configuration, so it's possible to get a PC without one. Under the bay is the NVMe drive. One unexpected discovery was that this particular configuration lacks built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip. I couldn't find any antennas under the hood either. I am not sure whether the PC left the factory like that or the chip was removed by a previous owner. I was able to locate the product on HP's official support portal using the serial number, but unfortunately I couldn't access any detailed specs. The portal only revealed that the PC had a warranty from March 2020 to March 2023. The PC's footprint is small, but unfortunately the 90 watt power supply is external. This is standard for most computers of this type, but I would still prefer a slightly larger size without an external power brick. Another drawback is the lack of an HDMI port. I would prefer one HDMI and one display port instead of two display ports. However, as I mentioned earlier, this can be addressed with HP's Flex modular system. In conclusion, I think this is a very good machine. Prices on the secondary market vary depending on the components it comes with. 
Some offers may not include RAM and storage or may have a weaker processor. Based on the configuration shown today in the video, I estimate the average price to be around $100. If you're looking for alternative models with more CPU cores, consider the Dell Optiplex 3060, 5060 and 7060 as well as the Lenovo ThinkCenter M720. These models have more CPU cores but at a slightly higher price. On the other hand, if you need a more powerful graphics card, AMD might be the better choice.